So with that, we'll turn it over to Dr. Ellen Ochoa, the Johnson Space Center Center Director. Ellen? Thank you, and thanks everybody for coming today. Uh, today's events are part of a series of activities that we're doing this year at JSC uh, that really focus on what we are doing and also what we need to be doing to pioneer space and eventually get humans to Mars. Hi, I'm Dustin Chase with News Fix in Houston, and my question is for the two cast members. After seeing and touring um, the facility today, is there anything that you've learned or seen that you wish that you would have known before starting to film the, the, the Martian? I mean, I think everything. I think that uh, that information that we've learned today is all very powerful. There isn't anything that I'm like, oh no, I like completely ruined that part of the movie because I didn't learn. But I think that I would have much preferred to have done this beforehand and had, um, I don't know, sort of the sense of community camaraderie and how much less isolated all of the individual arms of NASA are. Uh, yeah, so everything. My name's John Ferguson. I'm with the Galveston County Daily News. This is for the NASA folks. I was wondering how you all feel a movie like this or movies like Gravity and, and Interstellar that came out recently, how does that advance the mission of NASA in any way, if it does at all? Well, for me, I think it helps the public feel the excitement that we feel. I mean, for two hours they sit in the movie theater and they see the excitement of space flight. But this is something we get to live. And uh, it's something that we're building right now for a vehicle in Orion here that's going to, in three years, going to go most likely farther than any human-rated spacecraft has gone in history. And yeah, the launch is three years from now, but right now we're working on it. There's people that are building it in, in uh, Mashoud, and there's people that are working on the, how, they, how we fly it, how we uh, man it, the, the things we do when we're there. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing process that we are really excited about. So we love these movies that get, you know, let people take a little peek of what we get to experience. You know, I was reading some comments by the screenwriter, Drew Goddard, who said, you know, basically the book and the, and the, the screenplay is a love letter to science. And um, you know, I think uh, for those of us that do science and engineering, it's just really interesting and fun to be able to see a storyline that portrays the things that you can accomplish when you have a science and engineering background. And I don't know if Camille, you want to make a couple comments about some of the science that we're doing today on ISS, which um, it, you know, it's just amazing the range of things that we're doing there. Yeah, so the ISS, what I love about something like this is that it provides us the opportunity to share with the general public and with the media all the amazing things that we are doing, and especially on the International Space Station that is a science lab in space, um, a test bed to allow us to do groundbreaking research and, and advancements in technology demonstration. It really, really helps us to share with the public all the benefits that we're doing uh, with the research. Hi, Robert Perlman with space.com and collectspace.com for Sebastian. Uh, I wonder what you think a picture like The Martian does for audiences and particularly kids in getting them interested in uh, astronauts as real life superheroes um, and scientists as, as heroes as well. Uh, well, I, I certainly hope it, it inspires them to take an interest in, in science and in space travel and, and in becoming an astronaut. I mean, I, I just know relating from my past, uh, when I saw Apollo 13, um, which I think I saw in the theaters three times, um, it, was, it was huge for me. It really had an impact and, you know, it made me excited to go to science class and we were building rockets and, you know, so in the same scenario, I hope that hopefully uh, the Martian can, can do that for, for kids now um, because it's very, very much very real <laughs> in, in our lifetime right now, what it deals with. Eric Berger with uh, Houston Chronicle, question for uh, Eleanor Rex. You know, if people are gonna see this movie, they're gonna be like, wow, I wanna go to Mars, right? And it's gonna be awesome, but, but, but maybe talk about, we're kind of at the beginning of that journey and we're not there where the movie is. Yeah, so it really highlights a lot of things that we work on both here at JSC and of course at other NASA centers as well. And, and you mentioned some of the big ones. Um, you know, the entry, descent, and landing for landing crew on Mars or landing anything really heavy. Um, that's still something that we're trying to figure out how we will best do. We know how to land lighter things. We've done that through the rovers. Um, so there are a number of centers, including ours around NASA, that are, that are looking at that. Um, obviously, uh, a good 
a closed loop life support system, one that's very reliable and maintainable. We're learning a lot about life support systems on the International Space Station, and we do re recycle a lot of the water and we uh, generate oxygen, but we don't have it in a full closed loop system yet. And we also find out that it takes a lot of care in feeding, that we're, you know, we're spending time when you know, filters clog and valves don't work quite right and all those kinds of things. And that's one of the things that uh, we want to sort of try get to the next generation so we'll, we'll get into that reliability and maintainability. Yeah, so we, like Ellen was saying, we need systems that can work independent of the ability to resupply it, you know, because we need to be able to operate this uh, as, in a space station-like environment for years on end where we don't have the capability of sending up a spare part. So we're going to continue to work on the space station and learn how you do that. How do you have those life support systems that can do that? And the other thing I would mention, too, is spacesuits. If we want to really tr and explore on a planet, we have to have spacesuits that are extremely reliable and that can handle the, in, the harsh dust and, uh, and sharp object environment that you're going to be operating in. So that's going to be very important. If the Orion was magically ready tomorrow, we'd be a no-go for launch because the human body is not yet ready for us to go to um, Mars. And so we use the ISS, the one-year mission, is a major step for us in understanding human adaptations in space over a long period of time. So it's not just the technologies, but the human systems, too, that are critical, and the ISS is a crucial step in that direction. Uh, Kevin Reese with KHU, the CBS affiliate here in Houston for Sebastian and McKinsey. You talked this morning about how great it was to work with someone as brilliant as Ridley Scott, to work on the sets that you got to work on, how elaborate they were. But your honest opinion, to see this firsthand, the tour you had today, to sit next to a capsule that is the one that will go someday, um, what's it like for you? To, to see it firsthand, experience it somewhat for real. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's... <laughs> It's overwhelming. It, this isn't a movie set, obviously. I mean, you, uh, so this is very real. And uh, uh, if, if, if I would say anything to comparing it to Ridley Scott's movie set is that, you know, we were, we were very lucky to have sets that were detailed enough to try to even remotely get close to what we're seeing here today so that we could have more to play off of because obviously in order to capture uh, even an inkling of the reality of what these guys go through day in, day out in those... Um, in, in the space station, you know, we we would need to, to sort of match a little bit of the detail that's in there. So it's very surreal. I mean, um, it's definitely, I, I, I certainly wish we could have gotten here before we, we did the movie just because now I'm like really excited to do a sequel. But, but we, you know, I don't know what, that, what the deal with that is, but. Um, I think the the biggest shift is you walk onto a set that has that level of artistry, you appreciate, um, you know, the work of the artist who created it and somebody who has that attention to detail, but being here all day, you're like, but then it goes into space. Like, <laughs> it's really hard to get over that leap between um, something that's beautifully designed as a replica and somebody who you're talking to and you're like, oh, you, but you've actually seen Earth from outer space. So. Um, nothing really compares to the real thing, even if it's the most beautiful replica on the planet. My question is for any and all of you on the panel. So um, when does the first uh, family get to go to Mars? Well, we don't know when exactly that's going to be. Um, you know, part of my reason for really focusing on Mars this week, we have some other activities later in this week, and we, we had a, a week earlier this year in, in April, was to really tell my folks here at Johnson Space Center, look, we've got to push this every single day that we're here. We've got to push toward human exploration. You know, think about what you do in your job every single day. Is there a way I can do it better? Is there a way I can do it more efficiently? Is there somebody I should be partnering with, whether that's, you know, somebody at another NASA center or somebody in academia or in an organization or company outside NASA? that has good ideas that I can incorporate into this. So it, it's really about saying we have to push every single day because we want that day to come and we want to we want to make it come. That's why we're all here. We're that's you know, that's our mission in life. And uh, and so this is just a way to help make that more real and, and get everybody thinking about that. We could do a couple of different combinations. Uh, <laughs> Round two. <laughs> <laughs>